Hey guys, welcome. This is Edges, and welcome back to the Blacks on Bikes podcast, episode number nine. And today I have with me Miss Stephanie. And uh, how you doing today, Miss Stephanie? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Good, you good, good. I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. All right. So we'll hop right on into this podcast. Uh, so tell us where, where you from originally. I'm. Originally, I'm from Los Angeles, California. Hey, <laughs> and LA, and through the, yeah, California. <laughs> the, hey, that's right. I'm a California chick through and through. <laughs> I hear you. Short of wanting to move back there, so sorry, folks. Yeah, <laughs> but, no problem, uh, problem. Yeah, so I, now I reside in Texas. Uh, been here okay. since '99, and yeah, so I'm loving me some Texas parts of Texas also. Gotcha. Now I um I lived out in Texas for a little bit. I live right downtown actually in um in those uh live oak apartments and I also lived in Duncanville and up in um uh what's it? Rich Richland? Is that, is that Richardson? Right? Richardson. Maybe. Yeah, Richardson uh-huh. off off of uh, Royal Lane, so I lived out there for mm-hmm. a little bit. So are you actually yeah. in Dallas or one of the other towns around mm-hmm. Dallas? No. I'm sorry. No longer in Dallas. I now I live in North Fort Worth. And, okay. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm kind of out here on my own as far as my immediate family. There, a little bit uh, where I used to live, but I think I kind of picked it. I did that by design. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, you don't want to be too too close to everybody. You want them to have to call before they pop up. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. Even though uh, Dallas and Fort Worth are right next to you, you still have to call because that's a that's a little bit of a ride. Mm, it's huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you also this is your uh, you bought your did you buy your first home this year? Uh, are you in your home? I'm sorry. Are you in your Are you yes. in your first home? No, this is not my first home, but it's the first home as a divorce divorcee. So, oh, okay. yeah, okay. so, so okay. yes, yeah, so I'm. I mean, I'm happy. My name is all on it. <laughs> but no, we've had homes before when I was uh, in wedlock in the okay. past. <laughs> okay. I I just remember seeing um seeing that post way back saying you getting your first home. When we talked before, and you said you get your first home, whatever. All right. Mm-hmm. So here's the uh, question that. Ask, that I ask everybody is uh, uh, how did you get started cycling? Okay, um, I started off as a runner, um, basically in th- in ninety. No, when I don't remember the year now, but I started off as a runner and, and was just fell in love with it. Was surprised everyone that knew me back in my younger years because uh, I hated running. Um, but it came to me <laughs> running was a great great way to get and stay fit. And I just love cardio a whole lot more than I love uh, weight training. So uh, right. years of running, I did a couple of marathons. Uh, one of them, the Cowtown Marathon. And before that, I did a marathon on a treadmill, and that was in Afghanistan. So, okay. um, yeah, so after running a while, I started developing some runner's uh, issues, IT band issues and things like that. And and so I had after the, the Fort Worth Marathon, I had to pray and ask God, please, Lord, I need something. You know, I, I can't, I have to be able to exercise. And so then that's when I got my elliptigo, which is a kind of a, it's, it's, it's like the elliptigo, elliptico machine that's in the uh-huh. gym, only it's one you can travel on with wheels. And okay. so that was, yeah, it's a fun, funky looking thing, and it gets a lot of stairs, but it's a great workout. And um, so I got more, as much really, really quickly. Um, IT band, explain what that is, what that is, just for the listeners, because some people may not know. Okay. I mean, is it is around? I know, I know how to explain it, but basically, well, what area? A, what area of the body? It's um, it's it's on, it runs on the side of the leg from the mm-hmm. hip to like the side of the knee. Uh, the thigh, the upper, you know, upper part of your leg, okay. and that's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a, I guess it's considered a muscle or ligament. I, I don't know what it's okay. considered, but um, when you have problems with that, 
then it usually messes up, hurts the knee, and it hurts the uh, hip. And so okay. my left side was giving me the most problems, so I started overcompensating and, you know, leaning to my right side, and then that would hurt. But the, the big thing is stretching, a lot of stretching. That's one thing that could help that. But I'm, I, I must admit I hate stretching. <laughs> I love <laughs> yoga, but I hate stretching, just stretching for my workout. I just totally right. don't like to do it. So it was my own doing, uh, you know, and just and always – wanting to be so eager to, I just want to build Rome in a day. When I get an okay. idea in my head, I just right. go ham. You know, and then I wonder why I'm all jacked up and wrapped up, <laughs> you know. And so, so that's just kind of my spirit. But then I pay for it after. But So once yeah. I got the, um, the elliptigo, um, I left the country for a while and I came back. I was going on deployments a lot. I've deployed several times. but So I would leave the country and come back, and then I decided I wanted the road bike. And so I did that. And, and did you, did you, did you um, I don't mean to cut you off, but did you see something mm-hmm. that, um, that prompted you to want a road bike? You know, one of my uh, best girlfriends, uh, she started riding first. And when she told me how much she paid for her bike, like $1,100, including the shoes and this and that, and I was like, what a lot of us, you know, our first reaction is, what? Yeah. I know you didn't spend all that money on that bike. Right. So, and what else did you get? <laughs> you know, so, right. So that's how Did I you get a butler or a maid? That's <laughs> what I'm with saying. That bike? I'm like, exactly. So does it burn the calories for you? So, yes, yeah, so I, I was like, that. she's like cuckoo. And so, and then, right. then here I am, and, and, you know, I got into it. So, because the running I couldn't do in, in at Elliptico was great, but it, I'm a I'm an endurance distance type of at, athlete, right. and and I just you know I like to go long. I like to go hours and and go right. from, you know fifty, sixty, eighty, a hundred. You know I like to do that. Right. And the elliptical is a great workout, but because I can't go as fast as a road cyclist, and I'm out there on the road, I'm not on trails. Right. Uh, it was it would limit where I can go and feel safe if all I can do is handle 15, 16 miles an hour and trying to get out of the way of traffic or, you know, so that was kind of scary. And I said I needed something else, and that's where the road, side, you know, road bike came into play. And, mm-hmm. um, oh, but before that, I tore my ACL and meniscus. I fell off in my left side. I fell off my elliptical after one of my other deployments, and oh, wow. uh, I, yeah, I snapped. I snapped it. It was horrible. And so, oh, so I wow. had to have, uh, yeah, I had to have surgery on that knee uh, to repair, to replace the IT band uh, with a, a donor, that's a, a cadaver's IT band. So mm-hmm. it's like kind of you get two in one. <laughs> like, like, okay. <laughs> but, uh, and then uh, so hopefully that was a good spirit because I'm, I'm feeling good still. So right. and then, uh, then like a month later, I had to go back in and had to scope it because I started developing a lot of scar tissue. And mm-hmm. so after that, I just was like real serious with my therapy game, and I just had to go next level. And, and cycling um, – once I realized cycling made me feel better and I, mm-hmm. you know, it, it took away a lot of pain and, and it kept the blood circulating and I was like, I can dig it. So I, that's what, that's when <laughs> my true love came for road cycling. Honest. <laughs> you know, so, did, did you um mm-hmm. like go out and purchase a, a bicycle first or did you like, um like uh, some people do like rent a bicycle first, ride a friend's bike? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. That's not me. <laughs> you just hot right. You just went and got you one, right? I buy. Exactly. Yeah, I got and you. Fact, I got when you. I bought my first bike. I went to the guy and I said, "Look, check this out. I know I'm gonna love this. I have no choice. You right. know, I have to love this. I can't run like I used to." And I said, "So, and I don't want to buy twice. So don't come bring me to some bike that right. I already know. In six weeks, I'm gonna realize I should have spent more money. And right. so, of course." He gladly <laughs> took me to an area where I could spend, I could drop 2300 <laughs> And I was like, maybe right. I shouldn't have had that speech. I don't know. <laughs> but, but then it didn't take me long. I, I outgrew that bike, too. turns out it wasn't the right fit. So he gave mm-hmm. the owner got me another bike. I paid the difference. And, and mm-hmm. 
So that was uh, one bike. And then I, I'm on my fourth or fifth bike now. I have to do the math. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Because I think you're, on, um, you're riding Savello now, right? And, yeah, the, the Savello with the E-Tap, not uh-huh. E-Tap, um, with the uh, DI-2, that was the bike that I was like, yeah I'm, I, yeah, I'm here to do some things. So I was very excited about that bike. And it turned out that bike was a little bit too uh, too short for my torso, a little bit too long for my torso. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I said, wait a minute, these people, you go to one uh, fitter and they tell you one thing and they get you to buy something out their store, you go to another. And so that's that's a tricky business uh, part of it. And, uh, and I, you know, I guess it's the learning curve part of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I said, well, I'm not going to resell it. I because, I, I, like I said, I don't like to buy used 99% of the time of anything. Right. I, my might as well say 100%. I like buying stuff brand new. That's just me. Because gotcha. uh, if something's wrong, I like to go back and say, yo, <laughs> you know, <laughs> check out this here warranty. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So that, that's just me, you know. And yeah. so and I have, um, so I went ahead and bought another bike that's even better than that Cervelo, and I have a Cannondale uh, uh, Evo, I kind of Evo, at it again. I Evo six, is it Evo six? Is yeah, it? I think so. Uh huh. And uh, and I I I love that bike. That it took me a minute to get used to it, uh, but once I did, I was like, I, I realized that is a far. It was an upgrade from what I had in that Savello, that particular Savello. Yeah. So the Savello is actually on my trainer, on my Wahoo trainer, and mm-hmm. I just keep it on there, and my um. My Cannondale, I either use it on the rollers when I want rollers inside, or I'll. That's my road dog. That's the one I take out, and we're gonna make our money. I got you. <laughs> Trust me, what nobody's kind? making any money. They're they're living off of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. What um, what group sets on that uh, on that Cannondale? You know. What What was that? What group set is on that Cannondale? Oh, group set is that uh, now? Don't get too fancy on me now. <laughs> okay, what uh, what? Saying my uh, components. Yeah, components, correct. Oh, ooh. The sh- oh, I know, I know. It's the um. Ooh, let me run over there. Hold on one second. I wasn't prepared for that question. I oh, that's okay. Pull out my. I just pull out my card. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. And then I let other tell other people tell me, "Oh, snap." <laughs> you know. So, okay, this also has this one has uh one of okay, this is Durace on the Durace, Cervelo. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And then the Cannondale has the Altegra. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which one's uh which one's uh lighter? My uh Cervelo. It's lighter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I have a lot of extra stuff on here, but uh, but yeah, and I, I ride on zips, and usually it's the four hundred fours that stay on them. I have some three hundred threes, but uh, they ended up being a back back up. I should not have bought. No, they weren't even three hundred threes. They were two hundred twos, and I I realized I didn't need those. I should not okay. have bought those, but uh, but it's okay. It makes it. It's an extra pair. Unfortunately, it's kind of in the attic, but. It's, it's okay, <laughs> you know. I, I, I when I had a flat tire on my four fours, I walked myself right on back home, switched out the tires, and went on about my ride. So, <laughs> oh, I got you. What was the uh, what's the what was your first event? First event, I can bear. I think it was the uh, uh, wild. It was the wild. wild no, it was that one? It was what's that one in Waco? The, the hotter than hell. Yeah, hotter. I, that I can, if I remember correctly, I think hotter than hell was my first event, but that was my first time going as much as fifty miles on my road bike. So maybe that's why that one uh, is kind of in my mind. Um, mm-hmm. well, you, should, you should pick one hotter than hell, cause I tell you what, that heat in Texas is a different kind of heat. <laughs> it's a different kind of heat. When I was a yes, child and we would yes. visit here because my mom is from Texas, and as soon as the airplane door would open, I feel that heat, and I say, who could live here? I don't I understand know. why. Why I would say, you people live here. <laughs> I could not understand it. <laughs> and now I, I love the heat. I mean, because I'm kind of cold-natured, I guess. But, right. uh, but yeah, I'd rather have hot climate than cold. Cold just makes me lazy and stay in the bed. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I love the... Um, 
I'm a tropical person myself because I, I lived in Tampa for a little bit. Uh, after I left mm-hmm. LA Fitness in Dallas, I transferred to the LA Fitness in Tampa. But now on the East Coast, I'm on Georgia now, but on the East Coast we have humidity. And I used to think that that was bad. But when I mm-hmm. lived out in Dallas in that first summer, mm-hmm. it's, it's, literally, it's literally like starting up a, you know, I started with the barbecue grill. That's kind of how I describe, uh-huh. how I describe to people. When you uh-huh. first start up the barbecue grill and there's no meat on it and you close the top and go back in the house, mm-hmm. but then when you come back out and you open it up, and it's like <laughs> sticking your head into an oven. That's how it is in yeah. Texas, man. It's like dry. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how it is in Dallas, but uh, in down in Houston, it's more humid. So it's uh, it'll that heat will take you by surprise too, because you don't realize you're uh, becoming more dehydrated because uh, you know the, the yeah the wet anyway, and you don't right. realize it. But yeah. Oh, I I got some heat for you. <laughs> I was in Kuwait uh, one my first summer in Kuwait. It was, no, was that Kuwait or was, yeah, I want to say it was, I was in Kuwait or in Iraq. I'm not sure which one. I have to think real hard. But mm-hmm. bottom line is we had a lot of high winds. It was the summertime. And when the winds, and the, you know, the windstorm and the uh, sandstorms would come, mm-hmm. it was, uh, there was one particular day my skin was exposed. My arms were had on short sleeve. And the skin pierced on my, the sun was on my skin and the best way I could describe that experience, it felt like someone took, um, there's a needle, I forgot what that needle is. It gives you a shot, one of those. Uh, um, um, the t- the, uh, the, t- the typhoid? Yeah, one, I don't know if they do it for civilians, but it's like a gun, and it has multiple needles that are shoot out boom, on your uh, shoulder. They usually put it on your shoulder. Um, oh, the, uh, the, vac- shoulder, um, the vaccine? Yes, uh-huh. yeah. and, and it's, that's the only way I can describe it, where it just felt like, or, or how about this? Or imagine acupuncture, and someone takes a billion, zillion of those needles and prick you over and over and over and over and over, <laughs> you know? It felt right. like, because the sun was just basically just baking me, it felt like, and mm-hmm. then take a blow dryer and put it on high and just cram it up your nose and your mouth. <laughs> And, and that, that described that summer in Kuwait. I said, Lord have mercy. No wonder these, uh, I, I'm not going to say what I would say, right. <laughs> you know, out there. But I was like, I can imagine why these folks don't seem to be very happy all the time. Right. It's miserable. But you get it used is. to it. I've been there many years back and forth, so you kind of get used to it. <laughs> I don't know about that. I've been to Bahrain quite a few times. I don't know about that. Get used to it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they helped me with hotter than hell, you know, because I needed right. to just dig in. <laughs> right. All right. So um, here's a part. Uh, I'm gonna keep it really short, but here's the part I'm really excited about, and that is hearing your um, your health journey. And we'll start with um, how you got into uh, veganism, and I know you talked about this a little bit on your on your YouTube, and I'll share that link, and I put that link in the description after we uh, home. We get off the uh, off the podcast, but can you just kind of tell us how you began your journey into veganism and where you're at now? Okay, yes, I started just uh, how it happened for me. It was kind of spiritual in some ways too, which a lot of it is when you're making life changes like that. Uh, right. For them to stick, it's like you have to tap into all the areas, not just oh, I just want to lose weight, or not mm-hmm. just. Uh, I want to get off this here medication. It's it's mod- mind, body, and spirit. It's the total mm-hmm. total transformation for you to be. I feel to really be successful more long term. With and the sooner you realize that, again, the, the better off I believe a person could be. And so right. to have been eating meat for you know all my life, uh, and then deciding okay, I want to do this vegetarian thing. I couldn't really do it when I had my family, you know, my my husband at the time and my kids and because it was like when you do something like that, it is best to have 
the, the both of the parents, the heads of the household, to be on one sheet of music, the same accord, and right. then the kids have no choice. But when you have this division and they see things that one way and they they don't want to make these changes, it, it made it kind of hard. So, right. um, so once I did uh, start the process of, of us getting our divorce, unfortunately, uh, that's when I said, you know what? I can do me, <laughs> you know, and so, right. and I can continue my growth. And, and I went into, uh, I decided to become a vegetarian. I even shared that with my ex and my family members, with strangers, friends, everybody. That's me. When I'm starting to be in love with something, I shout mm-hmm. to the mountaintop. I'm like, I am woke. I'll, do you guys get it? <laughs> Guess what? I'm just like, right. don't believe the hype anymore. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Guess what? So that was me. And I kind of, I go a little too far, I think, for some people because uh, they, they just don't have that excitement for some of the things. So that was my path and not theirs at that time. You know, it's my journey. Mm-hmm. So it's taken me some years to realize that as well. So, um, so I was vegetarian for about three and a half years. And then I really wanted to become vegan, but I kept deploying. And it was so hard to, it was hard enough to be it's a healthy vegetarian when you're dependent upon the military feeding you food that they know are high caloric and they wanted to uh, sustain the ser- you know soldiers for right. longer time and stuff. So, and so then uh, I was able to become vegan uh, just before I came home and from uh, a deployment back in t- 2013, and that was when I tore my leg when I fell off that bike, mm-hmm. and that kept me from deploying. Well, I won't say it kept me from deploying. It, God allowed it, I believe to make me sit down because I had deployed a total of eight times and seven of those times was from 2005 through 2013. And I knew I was going to keep going back. And so I, even though I was getting tired of it, I wanted, you know, I knew, you know, driven to, to go back. Right. I, I love certain challenges and let's be honest, you know, it is a, good way to uh, make some extra money, especially if you can, you know, withstand living in austere conditions and, right. and you know, rockets and, you know, the Oh, deal. yeah, I get it. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, so I um, became vegan and raw vegan uh, when I tore my leg up, and, and that was a, a healing opportunity because of scar tissue and just one in the meds that I was on. I wanted to detox all that out on top of all the other stuff I was exposed to when I was deploying. And so, um, and of course, like I said, dealing with the loss of a, uh, a marriage and debt and a couple of deaths in the family while I was deployed. So I had a lot that was okay. buried in me that I had to figure out how to release. And yeah. for me, the sports, well, you know, well, being an athlete and exercising and, I mean, that's my hobby and that's, that's my thing. And, and cooking and making my dishes in my kitchen that I know exactly what the ingredients are, that's my hobby too. You know, people say, right. what's your hobby? I say, well, exercising and, and juicing and, you know, and they're like, no, you have another hobby? I said, no, what else do I need? <laughs> you know, this makes me happy, you know. So, and i tell you what, you, can make, you make some, um, man, those dishes, man. I love seeing them, but at the same same time, I'm like, man, I'm getting so hungry, man. Those dishes, I mean, they really, really look good. They really look delicious, man. Thank you. They 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 are good. I I I'm not lying. I love, especially if I should, if I took a a photograph of it. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, that was that was some, one of my best work right there. <laughs> so, right, yeah, we're gonna be waiting so. to see. We're gonna be waiting to see um see a, a, a more of a food blog or a recipe book or something. You got to do something. You got to give it back. You got to pay it forward. No, I, I hear that all the time, but I'm like, oh, my gosh. I like to toy with the platform on my own terms, and, 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 and you're right. I mean, I can make that my own terms, of course, but, I, you know, I guess uh, that's a part of my – that could be in my future, you know, a part of my, my evolution, and I won't – um, I won't say no to it. I'll just have yeah. to pray on that for God to make sure I, you know, I'm in right. a situation where I, I certainly can be successful and, and have thick skin because you have a lot of people who have their opinions of things, and, and I need to be able to um, support yeah. whatever my claims are. And if nothing else, I say, well, this is my experience. <laughs> and, right, right. And, and that's actually what I'm going through now with when we're talking about with healthy lifestyle, I'm actually on a, um, minimum of 21 day uh, water fast, and I'm actually 
at 7 p.m. this evening, it'll be 72 hours of all water, and, and I had not eaten any food. And so that's part of my okay. healing right now, going next level. Now, I, I think um, me and you probably are similar in some ways because if I'm hearing it correctly, um, you have to kind of be in a place of inspired work and not kind of be like so much on a schedule. Is that what I'm mm-hmm. hearing from you as well? Well, w- what do you mean by inspired? Uh, okay, like um, like even with this podcast, as much as I would like to do it every week, uh, produce content stuff every week, I still at some time have to be uh, find a way to be um, inspired to do it, like more of creativity from creativity mm-hmm. perspective. Like even finding the different music to try to match the person that's that I'm interviewing and stuff like this. So a lot goes into it or whatever. So I was just trying to take to a um, particular protocol. Um, I, I find it kind of hard. I have to be creatively inspired, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, that would be me too, yes, because I'm, I'm actually, I like to call myself an artist that can't draw, <laughs> an artist that can't paint, an artist that can't right. sing, you know, but I am, I'm not always black and white on most things. I just right. go by how I feel, you know, intuitively I'll make certain decisions and some people say, well, it just seems like you can't make up your mind. I'm like, well, that may be what it looks like to you and part of that mm-hmm. is probably true, but I do my best uh, when... Well, I actually do my best when I really want to when the timing is right and sometimes uh-huh. I do my I won't say my best, but I'll get it done at crunch time. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, We're probably similar that way too, because I, 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 I mm-hmm. believe it or not, I kind of thrive on crunch time more so than um, having the project finished. Uh, <laughs> I guess you could say ahead of time. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I did want to say this too to touch on this. Probably maybe give you a little bit of inspiration is when you talked about having thick skin. And now I'll mm-hmm. say this, and I, I'll, you know, we'll move on, but because I want to hold you up. But um, the name Blacks on Bikes, let's just say you should see my inbox, but I choose not to talk about those things because I want to give life to negativity. You understand where I'm coming mm-hmm. from? Mm-hmm. So I choose to just delete. Well, I'll respond. i respond in um, the best way I can, but I choose just not to, you know, to do those screenshots, say, hey, this is what somebody is saying, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't you can't answer to all of it, that's for sure. You can't feed it all. So right. I definitely understand that. And, right. and it's funny you should say that. Uh, I With my uh, YouTube channel, I have some likes and, and, and positive. And in fact, all the comments are, have been positive. Uh, I was down on a couple of them. And it's it actually made me chuckle because I'm like, why did you give me a thumbs up? It's funny because I wish that I, I knew what was the motivation for that. But uh, it, it for some reason it kind of tickles me when I see thumbs down um, because I, I guess I feel like it, it puts a, a bit of balance. If everyone's giving you positive and, you know, saying these mm-hmm. wonderful things, and we all know some people are just, I, I, they have, they don't really mean it. You know, they have other reasons why they want to give you a false positive, you know. So, uh, and same with negative, negative uh, comments or thumbs downs and things like that. Mm -hmm. There, it may not be uh, truly valid from my point of view, uh, but I mean, you know, that's that's such as life, (laughs) you know. So, so I I get that, and I guess I kind of take it in uh, the chunks that I feel that I'm ready for it. But at the same time, when I do hear people who say, oh, my gosh, I didn't see it that way or I didn't understand or thank you, this is motivation, right. that's what drives me to do some of the things that I do when I share on my Facebook page or, or mm-hmm. share a piece of me on the YouTube is because, guess what, I learned from other people who shared. If they had not given mm-hmm. their testimony, their good, bad, and the ugly, then yep. I would not have, you know, had the research um, in, in before me to make uh, uh, an informed decision for how can I make this work for me. So, right. so for that, you know, I guess you can say that definitely motivates me uh, because someone 
did it for me and and mm -hmm. I might trigger someone else. So Yeah, no, no, I would I would want to say there's a difference between um like I said before, the negativity that I receive is um you know, for the name, Black Some Bikes. Mm -hmm. Basically mm -hmm. get a lot of black for separation. Now there's a difference between that and somewhere I'm giving her own opinion on a statement. I welcome that because all that means is mm -hmm. Either that's just their opinion, or I'm not good enough. So that makes mm -hmm. me, I actually appreciate that. And that makes me mm -hmm. try to get better at what I'm doing. You understand? Right. Right. So I will get back on topic. So back to the, mm -hmm. uh, your story on the, uh, the journey of veganism and the vegetarian mm -hmm. and where you are now. Okay. So, yeah, where I, I after two years of being vegan, um, I was really hardcore with it, but I found it in the cycling community because that, like, that was my social, that was my world, was just road cycling and always joining with the groups and, and where uh -huh. we're going to travel to and are you going yeah. to this event. Yeah, so that yeah. was my thing. My family did not see me. If they didn't know that I got to go to bed because I have to get up at 2.30 in the morning, you know, we're not going to get to see each other. So, right. so I was really going hard with that and training and, and being with uh, the friends that I made, you know, in that community. But the problem I had was when we stand around and talking after a ride or even while we were on the ride, I had my makeshift foods that I was eating because I was just such a strict vegan. I wouldn't, I had to read the package. So sometimes I would be, uh, you know, bottoming out and people would offer um, uh, something to me. And I'd say, I can't eat it because it's not vegan. And they would look right. at me like, I don't even know what vegan is. And, and you're the one that's like, you're going to pass out, not me. <laughs> so so right. I was like, mm, mm, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> you know? And so, but, but I'd have my moments and people kept telling me, you need to eat meat. I said, you don't need to tell me what I need to eat. <laughs> you know? So, you know, I, know I was that's like, right. look, right on. I, I know yeah. my way back. I got my GPS. Go on and do your thing. <laughs> you know? right. So, so, you know, that was kind of a little bit of a battle sometimes. And then after the ride is over, when you stand around and you talk about stats and you talk about, you know, you know what we do. Yeah, and, I got uh, you. And, Right. And then they may say, okay, let's go eat. And then they, they look at me like, you know, so-and-so has salad. And I'm like, do I look like I need a salad? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that sounds cool, but I want steam coming off my plate just like you're going to have. So, so that, you know, they were like, oh, well, they have this bean soup. And they, I'm like, yeah, never mind. Y'all go right. ahead. And, you know, and then I, I'm like, I got food in the car. I can eat it. So, so that kind of, you know, put a damper on things. I couldn't really go the whole way. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I uh, allowed myself to go back to vegetarianism. And part of it was because I wasn't building enough muscle in my injured knee. So um, right. they were that I needed to uh, get more protein. Now I could have, I had plenty of protein for someone who wasn't as le as athletic as me, but right. that's where I ran into more problems because I couldn't eat as much as I needed to eat, and I couldn't get to it as quickly as I needed to, especially if I insisted on making it myself and bringing it to, uh, you know, to bring it with me. You know, if I would be more open to going to restaurants and all that, then okay. But I just did. I wanted to know what I was eating, and right. um, so so and I and I shopped organic, did as much as I can get my hands on. So um, so I went ahead and said uh, it was about I get more than a year and a half ago. I decided, okay, well, I guess I'll go ahead and eat these little baby chickens again and eat their eggs, you know. And uh, you know, and then that I was that was. I'm 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 assuming that was pretty hard, right? It was. It was because I it grossed me out. Ah, uh, yeah. The crack of eggs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was like, and I felt so like a sellout. I felt like I was. I really felt like I was a hypocrite, and um, and it was really hard. It took several months for me to really get into stuff. First of all the food made me sick and then you mm -hmm. have to get past that. And then, you know, and then the mental part of it, of course. So next thing you know, when I got used to cheese though, Ooh, Lord have mercy. I was eating, I was killing my, my vegan <laughs> pizza game was on point. <laughs> and I, I, man, I love cheese. I, I, man. I mean, yeah, cheese is very addictive. It's just one of the most that and sugar are the most addictive foods we have. So, um, so I, I, you know, like I said, so I'm in ten in in about six months, five months, 
I gained 10 pounds. And, and I, just from eating bread again, uh, eating more processed food, because um, as long as it didn't have meat in it, I would, you know, eat, eat a good portion of it. Not everything, because some things I just couldn't go there. But, um, but yes, yeah, so I, I picked up that weight, and there was a moment where I was drinking sodas for about a month. And mm-hmm. one, I, that wasn't cool. And I was gaining weight, and I was like, this is not cool. And it was proof positive that just because someone says they're a vegan or a vegetarian, they can still be very unhealthy. Yeah, you know, they, exactly. Because if you're eating junk food just in the sake, name of uh, saying there's no meat in it, trust and believe, eating French, French fries is vegan, but right. you're not going you're not to do very well eating plates of French fries every day. So, right. um, and Oreo cookies are vegan. But we all know that's no good for you. So, um, so that was really hard. I had developed a lot of bad habits in eating foods that I ordinarily would not have. So then it brought me to the point to where I'm at, where I'm doing this fast. So, because um, I had to break all these addictions of sugar, the cheese, and just and also dig deep because uh, in our fat cells, I know I have some toxins waiting on me, you know, so, and I'm mm-hmm. going to get to them. <laughs> it just, it sure, it sure, I'm getting to them, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. So after I emerged from my end of my fast, if it's going to be 21 days or more, I'm not even sure. We'll see when we get closer to it. But when I am done with the fast, I uh, plan on being vegan again. And, um, okay. and yeah, so that, that, that's my that's my goal. I'm, I'm only saying it with hesitation because I may have to deploy again, and so I may have to make certain adjustments. But we'll see. I'm praying that okay. uh, I can I have a very uh, healthy opportunity to, to stay on this here path. I got you. I got you. And definitely appreciate that. Now, when it comes to um, to shopping, what's uh what's some of your what's your favorite store? Is it Whole Foods? Is it Publix or? Well, you already know. Publix is not in Texas, but I do know of it because I've been to the East Coast, and, and that's where I would go when I get off the plane and go to Publix <laughs> and get my food and, so, and take it to my room. And so, But, yes, we I shop at Whole Foods. We have Central Market here in Texas, and that's like uh-huh. a really big version of Whole Foods, but it's, it's started in, in Texas. It's a Texas store, okay. and it's huge. And we have sprouts, and I think sprouts are popping up everywhere across the nation. And um, I love okay. sprouts. That's an inexpensive. Well, it's, it some things are kind of pricey, of course, but they're uh, organic fruit and vegetables. Well, their organic vegetables are good prices. Their organic fruit is usually not very uh, good. Um, I don't think they sell enough of it. So it's okay. not always, yeah. That that's not that's not their claim to fame in my book, but um. And then there, what else do we have? Oh, yeah. we have new stores that are popping up called Nature's Grocer, and uh-huh. everything in it is organic. There's no GMOs in it at all. It's it's a very healthy uh, grocery store. That one can get a little pricey too, but I do love that anything mm-hmm. in there. I don't have to worry about it looking for a label that says non-organic. Um, I mean non-GMO. Uh, because everything in there is, and and then What's I the name shop. Of the store again? It's called Nature's Grocers, and they're popping okay. up everywhere. I don't know if they just started in Texas, but that's I'll where I've seen them, and, and I've gone. Yeah, check them out and see. If, and I, if they continue on the path they are, I wouldn't be surprised if they go nationwide if they're not already. And another story. This is another tip for our listeners. Mm-hmm. Aldi. Aldi. Yeah, Aldi. Aldi's, yeah. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. That store actually it start they can look it up. It started in Germany. Uh a father started it I don't know, forty years ago or more or something. And mm-hmm. his son each son took it over. And Aldi, uh the one that you see most common, uh, with the orange and I forgot. It's this the one you I see most common. That one is the one by one particular brother and he doesn't sell anything but liquor. I mean uh, uh wine in it but both of the stores are um they they're Mm non-gmo they have a lot of products in there that don't have uh additives and and, in things synthetic fibers and stuff like that right they have uh they're going organic they've announced that they're they're uh converting all their stores and selling everything organic and there's already some organic things in there now Mm -hmm. and um they have and they're also the other brother that that is 
that sells the other type of Audi, the one that sells liquor. He owns Trader's uh, Trader Joe's. Oh, I didn't so know that. Of, oh, cool. Yeah, uh huh. So and Trader Joe's, everything in there is non-GMO, and right. um, their produce. Well, they do have some uh, conventional produce too, but but yeah, that's in those stores. Trader Joe's is a little bit more expensive, a little bit more expensive than Audi, but mm-hmm. Trader Joe's is usually better, a lot better priced than some of the other stores I mentioned, especially when you're trying to look for organic uh, mm-hmm. options. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I do. I don't find everything I want out of one store. Right. I'm usually store hopping when I'm going grocery shopping, um, especially if I'm into my juicing. If I'm into juicing, oh, yeah, I'm going to be yeah. all over the Metroplex and getting what I want. Let yeah, me ask you this. So, um, <laughs> since, the, um, since Amazon acquired uh, Whole, Foods. Whole Foods, have you noticed the price differences that they said that they, uh, that they were going to employ? I noticed a little bit. Um, I haven't, I haven't gotten to Whole Foods as often as I used to because of where my home is and and where now I'm working. I'm teleworking mostly. So one okay. day out of the week, I leave to go to the office. So once I come out, you know, on that office day, I do all my grocery shopping and I come back in. So, mm-hmm. um, but so I haven't had the luxury of going to those stores I love to go to as often as I used to because I no longer live in downtown Fort Worth. And right. so I, and, and then another place that I lived in near Fort Worth, downtown Fort Worth, I was right there on the street where all those stores were. It was like gotcha. heaven. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but I did notice some, uh, especially right after the merger, I did notice the produce. It shocked me. I thought I was looking at the wrong uh, sign I was surprised that there were some great prices on some peaches that particular day. I was buying some peaches, and I noticed it. So mm-hmm. I will say that, uh, but I have to pay closer attention again because they're certainly telling everybody the prices have dropped a lot. Right. But I, um, I have to pay closer attention to that one. Uh-huh. I actually looked at um, a couple of the, uh, what's it called, Amazon Fresh I uh, looked at mm-hmm. some reviews on that, so people were having the uh, groceries delivered to them through Amazon mm-hmm. Fresh, and they were saying how the prices were, you know, were very noticeable. Right. I, you know, I don't know what it would take for me to try that because I, my parents, we grew up raising, not raising, well, we did raise some animals, but we grew, um, we had peach orchards, pea fields, watermelon fields, so I mean, I was... I was roughing it, <laughs> and I know my way around produce, you know, right. and selling fruit stand and, you know, a couple of fruit stands. So I know awesome produce, and I would only get the best, you know, when I wanted some grapes or wanted a watermelon or, or peaches mm-hmm. or apricots. I got the best. <laughs> so, so fast forward as an adult, and I go to grocery stores. I don't get to go to very many farmer's markets. But a lot of those farmer's markets, they got it out of a – a wholesaler, a lot of stuff's not even grown in on a farm, a traditional farm like they're trying to get you to believe when you're at the farmer's market, but that's another right. story. So, but, uh, but yeah, so I would, me personally, I like to look at my fruit and vegetables and I pick the best. And I know okay. that if they're stocking it like they're supposed to, the old is on top and the new is in the back or the bottom. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I know if I let someone shop for me, they're not going to probably pick the best unless they they know to bring me the best and I give them a good tip. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so I, that's, that's my thing. I'm kind of, you know, I guess a bit uh, controlling when it comes to that. And that, that brings me to why I probably do most of my cooking at home because I enjoy knowing exactly what I'm getting and not, you know, maybe some shortcut uh, the chef or the cook or that business establishment is making and giving me what they want. So right. that's kind of my thing. But I don't knock it. You know, everyone has their thing. But mm-hmm. me personally, because food and eating and, and exercising is my hobby too, it's my lifestyle, I, I, I like to be more hands-on. But as it grows and, you know, if it can make it make sense to me later on in the future, then I can, I can live with it too. I'm happy we have those options though. Yeah, definitely options. All right, so we're about to wrap it up, and got just a couple more questions. One is, this is kind of some fun facts about yourself. All right, um, what do you have in your playlist music? 
Oh, my playlist. Oh, ooh, I've been on this African music kit from Nigeria and uh-huh. some other, a couple of other countries. Uh, and I, don't ask me who the artists are. I cannot pronounce their names. <laughs> All I know is when the spirit hits me, ooh. <laughs> I'm like, that's my song, ooh. You gonna have, you gonna have a whole lot when nobody else is around. <laughs> You're going to have to send me some and let me check them out. You gotta text will, me some. I'll, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll turn you on to something if you don't already All right. know. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So it's definitely that, and my uh, gospel. I love my contemporary gospel. I love right. jazz when I'm in the mood for that. I love certain okay. old school, um, you know, just the 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 beautiful songs. You know, I got you. Um, yeah, a, a mix of every all kinds of things. But when I really want to get it done and mm-hmm. really want to lift my spirits. I go uh-huh. to my African jams. <laughs> okay. Yeah, send me on. I want you to send me a couple of African jams, you know, I can, so I can I check will. them out. All right. Mm-hmm. Favorite seasoning? Oh, favorite seasoning. Ooh. Mmm. I can only pick oh. one? Give me, th- <laughs> give me three. Three. Three? Good. Thank yes. you. Okay. Um, <laughs> i got to say, I, I do love Himalayan pink sea salt. I know that's not a seasoning, it's a salt, but I mean... Like well, yeah. we use it as seasoning. So okay, mm-hmm. that and I love. Ooh, I love. Goat so you said Himalayan pink sea salt, right? Sea salt, exactly. Uh-huh. Okay, all right, all right. And and I love. That's the only salt I use. So okay. I don't buy seasonings that have salt in it unless it at least say sea salt is in it. But um, what's special about that? I like um, the the minerals uh, because okay. the white the table salt that robs us of iron. That's no good for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Table salt, forget about it. Start uh, incorporating or bringing, well, throw away the table salt today and go buy some pink sea salt or uh, a black sea salt or a white one, doesn't matter. But I, I love Himalayan pink sea salt. That one seems to have a, I know how to operate my flavor with that one. Some okay. of the other salts are a little bit saltier and, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, but I, right. I stick with that one. And then I love ghost peppers. I love cayenne pepper, but when um, but ghost pepper and, and scorpion pepper is even hotter. So okay. and I I love that. It's great for parasites cleansing. You know, it'll okay. get certain par- parasites out of you when you uh, put that into your system. And then I guess another one is I'll go with turmeric. I love turmeric. I've been on an Indian type of kick as far as okay. uh, the the um, the turmeric, the um, curry powder, mm-hmm. um, also the, what other cuisine uses that? The people who have the jasmine rice. Who is that? Jasmine is, is rice. That, yeah. I'm not sure. Not Japanese, not Chinese. It's, I can't think jasmine, jasmine rice right now. A Vietnamese or Korean or? Yeah, maybe. Uh, Filipino? It'll come to me after it's over. No, not, not them. It's, it might be. I don't remember, but anyway, I, I, it'll come to me later, maybe. But but yeah, I love um, yeah yeah. The, the, if I can, if you just put a gun to my head and you tell me to give you three, those are the three that popped out, which is Himalayan pink sea salt, one of the uh, hottest peppers in the world, which would be um, mm. ghost pepper or um, scorpion pepper, mm-hmm. and um, and then the uh, turmeric powder. Gotcha. And now I can go on. Do you see my cabinet? I have a lot of spices and herbs in there. But you can tell me too. <laughs> yeah, that's, I see. Trust me. I know you can go on. I've seen those dishes that you make, so I know. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So, Miss uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on the uh, podcast. I definitely appreciate it. Now, if there's any piece of advice as far as healthy living, uh, that you can give anybody or share with anybody, what would you share? Piece of advice. Oh, wow. What would I say? I would suggest that I guess it, it, I, because I am a spiritual being and I am connected to my Father in mm-hmm. heaven, I mean, for me, it usually, it, it for me to, some, unfortunately, it's a moment in my life that may say you're at a crossroads and with this crossword, I may have talked about making changes a lot, 
But then mm-hmm. I never got off my butt and did it. But right. somehow, it was my spiritual connection, something triggered, something happened. Sometimes it was something dramatic, like uh, maybe going through a divorce and maybe uh, having a death in a family and from, or maybe, you know, having an injury where I'm laid up in the bed and I'm, mm-hmm. total, I'm dependent on other people, which is, and I'm a very independent person. So right. those moments like that, unfortunately, might be the ones that make us, you know, get off the pot you know, the blank right. blank or get off the pot and, right. and make those changes that you may have been kind of wishing you wanted to do but never got around to it. But now now mm-hmm. this is where the rubber meets the road. So I would say uh, to a person, find a way to meditate and get within yourself and find out what is it that I need and how can I get there, you know, and take a baby right. step. Don't go all in hard. Sometimes you might have to because if someone mm-hmm. gives you a diagnosis that says you have cancer and I want to start your chemotherapy in three in two days or tomorrow, right. you know, you're going to have that something. <laughs> you probably won't even get any sleep that night. <laughs> you know, right. so, so you're going to have to work your way through that. So, But uh, for me personally, I want to get ahead of a doctor giving me some sort of diagnosis like that. That's mm-hmm. why I make my changes now. And um, so, so that's kind of, I guess, the advice I would give is, you have to work, go within yourself and find out what is it you need and then figure out how, you, how can you map your way to that, to that mm-hmm. goal. And, and also to know that there's more than one way to get there. You know, exactly. It, some people will say they were healed by juice fasting. Or some people said, um, I, I eat uh, eggs and, 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 uh, and organic milk, you know, mm-hmm. and I cured myself of this or that. You know, so... Uh, so I, I feel like if you remain open to evolution and growth, mm-hmm. you, you will find that, okay, maybe Definitely. juice fast can help you, but now you've got to go next level, you know, and right. be ready to go next level. And let's not ridicule people who say um, that's not going to work. I mean, right. they say they can't imagine, you know, that's not going to work. It's, no, no. Okay, juice fasting did help me at that time, but now I have to go deeper. Mm-hmm. It, my my that juice fasting prepared me to, uh, you know, get to this level that I'm trying to get to. So I, I that's I, without going on and on. I that's kind of what I would say is that you have to start somewhere, and that somewhere is always within you, and and mm-hmm. being in touch with who your creator, who you believe your creator is. You know, just to be more politically correct, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. You know. And I you know how to be political correct over here, we shoot it straight. But um yeah. to kinda sum it up, what you were saying is and we talked about this I think we messaged each other about we well, we did message each other about this. Man, I'm tongue tied today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we did message okay. each other <laughs> about this. Um and that is self awareness. That is probably one of the most uh valuable things that a person can have in today's mm-hmm on today's time is self-awareness knowing what you need and knowing how to map it and to get it mm-hmm. yep. yeah you summed it up <laughs> <laughs> well we yeah, summed it up it but it's only because we already talked like about it before you everywhere with me so you can just give the version that i give the short version <laughs> <laughs> no 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 like you said there's more one more than one way remember mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. more than one way to get the answer. So, all right. Mm-hmm. And last thing, can you just share your YouTube channel so people can know where to find you, follow your journey? Because you're on day number three. Yes, this is day number three. And after we're yeah. done with this, and I'm going to go ahead and cut my camera on and and give about a seven or ten minute spiel of how uh, my day three is going. And Good. that's on uh, Steph S T E P H space Active space veggie space bird spelled B Y R D, and that's how folks can find me. Uh, Steph Active Veggie Bird on my YouTube channel, and if they like what they hear, please describe, uh, subscribe and and follow me. You get alerts right away, and and then uh, you hit the like, hit the dislike, make a comment, <laughs> ask for clarification. Don't matter. <laughs> you know what I'm I mean, we're, we're all gonna learn something from from the experience. So, um, right. so yeah, I welcome anyone to uh, to come in, and 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 hopefully they can get a few nuggets that they can take with them. 
I certainly do. I'm still growing and learning from everyone. And that's what I like. And guys, for guys, this is what I really like about um, um, Stephanie. She's very open, honest. Um, she's willing to share. So I really appreciate that, you know, about her. And that's one of the reasons why me and her are connected. So make sure you go uh, visit her YouTube channel. Click on the uh, the little bell to the right so you can get all the notifications when she uploads. That's what I did. So make sure you go <laughs> and, com and comment. Don't be afraid. A lot of times people are afraid to comment. But go ahead and comment. Hit like or dislike and comment because she's not going to get upset either way. She's going to take it as a uh, a learning, uh, a way to learn versus getting upset or anything like that. All right. And to learn how to improve herself. So, all right. That's all I have. If you have anything that you would like to share or anything you want to say, any final words? I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to, uh, to share with uh, your, you and your audience. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and I, I appreciate what you do, having a magazine like you do and having this podcast because, I mean, we need this in our community and need to continue to en concur encourage each other and uh, stay motivated right. and, and, you know, positive. You know, just how, how do we help each other? Because that's, that's part of our brotherhood and sisterhood. Amen? <laughs> that is definitely correct. <laughs> I am doing, work, working, doing what I can to to uh to help build the community and bring us more together. So, Cause I know we like cycling and everybody enjoys the sport, but I really been racking my brain lately trying to figure out how we can connect more. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm really, you know, focused on. All right. All right. So well, you thank you. Way, my brother, doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thank you, Miss Stephanie. Hold on for just a second. But I want to just tell everybody, uh, thank you so much, and make sure that you go visit her YouTube site. And I will see you guys on the next episode. So hold on, Mr. Uh, okay. Mr.